Hey everyone, it's Matt from Cast Labs, and today we're going to be looking at my kinematic optimization software um, that I wrote, which basically allows you to programmatically design a bike or iterate on design instead of dragging points around and in your CAD software and linkage. Um, you basically can start with a baseline uh, bike kinematic and then iterate, you know, a thousand or a hundred thousand times and get as close as uh, possible to whatever your design um, targets are be they kinematic targets or something else. Um, and so this isn't something that new or novel, this kind of optimization exists in basically every industry. Even our own, there's a software out there called Kinematrix, some guy made a long time ago, it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I basically wanted to make one on my own, I thought it'd be a fun project. Anyways, we'll start with a quick refresh on how I programmatically define a bike, then we'll go into the basics of how this optimizer works, we'll look at the code, and then we'll run an example. Okay, instead of showing you a big wall of code, I made this little graphic to help explain how I define a bike programmatically. So I've created a bike class, which just allows me to store all the important data I need in a good data structure to define a bike. So we have our kinematics, pedal kickback, leverage rate, any squat, any rise, motion ratio, axle path, you name it. These are attributes of the bike. We also have these other attributes of the bike, geometry, frame, shock, fork, drivetrain, wheel, front, wheel, rear. And then on top of that, we have all these methods. And these methods are just kind of functions within the bike class that allow us to do cool stuff. So we can compute things, most importantly, kinematics, because kinematics allow us to compute all of these other things that are relevant for you know this optimizer that we're gonna look at in a bit. These attributes on the left are green, distinguishing them from the gray ones on the right here, because these are actually also custom classes that I've built out. For example, I'll show you this geometry class which has all these gray attributes on the right, head tube angle, position of the fork bottom, position of the front axle, position of the VB, you get the idea. And then it also has these methods, which allow me to do kind of the computation that's relevant. So you get the idea. Each of these attributes of the bike is its own class with its own data and its own attributes. And this is just a way to represent really complex data structures in kind of a clean and scalable way. I'll show you a really simple example here that I made. Instead of looking at the thousands of lines of code in the bike class, we'll just create or instantiate a bike object, Matt's Enduro. And then we'll say, hey, I want to animate Matt's Enduro's kinematics. And so the beauty of the bike class is that we kind of abstract away all the complexity and we're able to work with it in a really simple way, which is useful for the optimizer. Now let's take a look. So here you see the kinematics being animated. Uh, it's a lot of complicated math behind the scenes, but simple output, which is great. Okay, so before we go back to coding, I'm going to briefly explain the basics of what we're doing with the optimization process. And so this is the Enduro kinematic. You've got your rear axle here and your shock here. You'll have to use your imagination a little bit. Um, and we want to, say for this arbitrary example, change the leverage ratio. So this is our original leverage ratio in blue. And say we want to raise it by 10% at every point. Um, this is our target leverage ratio. So when we optimize something, we're trying to go from point A to some target goal point B. And this is what we're doing with the leverage ratio here. In order to do this, we have our target defined. That's great. Now what we'll do is we'll define our search space. So this is basically boundaries or bounding boxes on all the points that we can move around. Um, and the points can move around arbitrarily within the search space. And so these bounding boxes define where we can move points around to try to test new kinematics. So let's see, let's arbitrarily pick, for a simple example, we can say, hey, let's randomly pick new points um, for our bike. And so we're basically like creating a new bike almost. And so we've got a new shock member, we've got a new link here. Uh, rear axle stays the same because I want to fix the wheelbase. Um, ugly chain stay, and then these are new. Okay, so now we've got this new red bike, which is just a random bike, and it might be an optimized bike. It might have a better leverage ratio. So now that we have the bike defined, um, we can compute its leverage rate and say it's, it's somewhere down here. Well, that's no good because we're further away from our target than the original one was. So we'd, we'd basically wanna throw that bike out and start over again. But say we get lucky, we hit the jackpot, and we're super close to our target. 
well great we have now an optimized bike that's better than the one we started with um, and the closeness to our target uh, we can define as like a cost function and we want to minimize this so the smaller our cost function the closer we are to our target um, so every time we create a new um, bike within our search space we're going to see if our if our cost function is lower um, and we can add any number of targets here so you'll see in my other examples i'll add anti squat anti rise maybe pedal kickback um, and we can have all these different targets that we use and we sum up to create our loss function and we can bias these so we can say hey i value anti squat more than leverage rate so let's uh, make anti squat have a weighting or a bias of 0.6 and leverage rate a bias of or weighting of 0.4. And so that's gonna say, hey, in our cost function, it's a little more important to optimize the anti-squat. And you can add any sort of targets, you know, it can be all the kinematic stuff, it could be axle path, um, it could even be like number of water bottles that you can fit in your front triangle. But that's basically the basics. So we're gonna move into coding world now because we do things that are a little more complicated. Okay, so now that we've gone over the basics of what we do when we're trying to optimize a kinematic, uh, we'll go through my optimizer class that I wrote, which does this optimization. So you can just randomly select points for as long as you want and hope that they get closer to the targets um, and they generally will. But this optimizer is a little more intelligent than that. It uses a type of optimization called the genetic algorithm. And basically what this is doing is modeling natural selection. So in natural selection, you have some population of animal and over the years, as the generations go on, the fit parents maybe survive more, um, the stronger ones or the ones with bigger teeth or the smarter ones or some mutation in their wing or their paw. And these kind of good genes get passed down. Uh, you have random mutations, which sometimes help the population and kind of get worked in. And yeah, you kind of have this selection pressure for fit parents that like goes generation after generation. So it's not quite random. There is some random stuff in it in these like random genetic mutations, but it works pretty well. And, and a lot of our good technology actually just mimics nature, like poorly mimics nature. And so that's what I'm doing here. I'm poorly mimicking nature by starting instead of with an animal population, I'm starting with a bike population. So I randomly create a bunch of bikes, um, say 100 bikes or 10,000 bikes or whatever. I initiate this population of bikes that are just randomly selected points within my bounding boxes or my search space. And then I use the genetic algorithm to evolve this population over time. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm creating child bikes from these fit parent bikes. So I select, you know, a few fit parents um, or two fit parents for each child um, using what's called tournament selection. We don't need to go into that. And then I cross over. So I pick some kinematic points from one parent, some kinematic points from another parent, and I fuse those together to create a child. Um, so this is our new bike. Uh, it's a little weird talking about them like as a species or parents and children, but bear with me. Then I mutate the, the bike. Um, so in nature, there's these random mutations that sometimes are very favorable. And so in this mutate function, I have like a five or 10% chance that we actually um, are going to mutate one of the points on the bike. And then I compute the fitness of the bike. So the fitness, again, remember our cost function or our loss function, and we can calculate how far off these new kinematics are of our optimized bike from our kinematic targets. This gives us kind of a fitness score of our bike, similar to how you would have, you know, the fitness of a certain animal within a pack. And yeah, so then each generation, we keep running this algorithm. We're selecting fit parents. We're crossing over fit parents to create new children. We're mutating these, this new population, and we're computing their fitness. And so we have this, this population of bikes that evolves over time. And after enough generations um, and iterations, we have optimized bikes. Okay, so now that we know how the optimizer works, let's try a trivial example. So I've created a short script here that actually runs the optimizer. You'll see it's quite simple because the optimizer itself is actually a class. So that makes invoking it super easy. So we create an instance of Matt's Enduro. We define our targets. So for this example, I wanna bring the leverage rate, anti-rise, pedal kickback, anti-squat all down by 10%. For the anti-squat and pedal kickback, since 
it's computed for every gear. I just picked a random gear. That's what's going on up here. And then we apply weights. So these are kind of our biases of what we think is most important to optimize for. So our leverage rate is weighted the highest, anti-squat rated the lowest. So in our results, we'll expect us to be closer or closest on the leverage rate and maybe furthest away from the anti-squat target because we've weighted it so low. And then here are our bounds. I've just defined our bounds as circles of 50 millimeters. I also allow for arbitrary polygons to be drawn around each point. And this is a little more of an intelligent way to do it when we're considering design for manufacturability or clearances and all that fun stuff. So then we create an optimizer object. Uh, we're running it a few thousand times and we get our results out, uh, which we'll take a look at now. So here's my original bike. Uh, this is my Enduro, it's the bike that I ride. I've got these uh, gray search spaces defined here and these points with red axes are just fixed points. They don't move as the bike compresses its suspension. Um, and up here is my center of mass. It's a rough approximation. So here's my original in blue and my targets are in orange. You see that my goal was just kind of dropping these by 10%. So let's take a look at some of these results. I, I returned five results here and the optimized bike zero has the best results. So it's the lowest cost function. It's the closest. But yeah, you can see it's kind of cool on the left. You can see the, the layout change. Um, so you can see where the points ended up, which is kind of sweet. Let's look at the best bike. So this is the bike that had the lowest cost function. So you'll see our leverage rate is pretty close. Um, it dropped it. There's a bit of a gap here, but overall it's a lot closer than where we started. Our pedal kickback is almost bang on. Um, our anti-rise, you know, we maybe compromise on the shape a bit, but we did kind of bring it down. So we're a little closer to this optimal or this target curve. And then you'll see the anti-squat. Since I valued it the lowest, I gave it the lowest weighting. It looks like we actually got further away from our target curve. Um, but since we weighted it so low, um, this bike ended up still being the closest to whatever our target was. So this is a good example of just how the optimizer works. So we ran through a bunch of different layouts. We optimized them generation over generation, picking parents, adding mutations, et cetera, et cetera. And we came out with, you know, a different bike. You can see uh, how the bike kind of uh, changed from left is the original bike and right is the um, optimized bike. So that's like a trivial example, pretty sweet. Okay, so that's a pretty good overview of the optimizer. Uh, it's a pretty generalizable tool. I can add any amount of arbitrary constraints and targets like axle path or fixing the shock length, which I do, or letting it vary or allowing it to you know, only pick bikes within a certain rear wheel travel if we change the leverage rate. Um, but yeah, it can be used for a lot of interesting stuff and I hope to, to do so in the future. Um, I do want to address the most important thing here is that this isn't the hardest part of the design process. Uh, what's way harder and I should be focusing on maybe if I had more time would be figuring out what the heck these targets should actually be. You know, what is the anti-rise or the anti-squat that we should be targeting for? You know, the trail bike, the down country bike, the e-bike, the downhill bike, because these platforms are all super different and likely will have very different targets um, to get the ride quality that we want. But we don't really have a great mapping from, you know, metric, kinematic metric to ride quality or feel. Or... So I think the really cool thing to, to do would be work on research in the field, on the trail, or in simulation and dynamic modeling that will allow us to basically like better determine what these targets should be for a given bike, you know, and then taking those targets, which we determine quite rigorously from an engineering perspective and feed them into the optimizer that I, that I currently have. So I plan to work on this stuff some more whenever I have time or if I ever have money to work on it. Um, but uh, for now, I'll just keep making these fun random videos. Uh, the next one I'll come out with, we'll be using this tool to do some wheel rate optimization. So wheel rate's just, you know, your shock spring curve with the leverage ratio applied to it to give you your force at the wheel. And we're going to look at just like linearizing that because everyone's hyped on linear stuff. Anyways, let me know what you think was cool. Um, what you think I maybe messed up or, or would like to see me do um, with this tool or otherwise. And if you have any ideas for stuff that you guys would think would be cool in the future, uh, let me know. Peace guys.